Have you wanted to spend more time with your loved ones or for your children or just live in another country all while working? If so, consider going remote. Hi, my name is Ting and I'm a remote front end developer here at Arc. Working remotely as a developer is attractive for many reasons, including but not limited to killing off your commute, to spend more time with loved ones or, you know, bettering yourself or even just traveling while working. Let's dive into three methods to transition you from an on-site developer to a remote one. Method number one, directly applying for remote software engineering jobs. The most straightforward method would be to apply for an existing remote position. Aside from searching for keywords like remote X developer or remote X engineer on cross industry platforms like LinkedIn, Monster, Indeed, you would have to go through job description after job description, reading through all the contents to figure out whether this remote job is suited for you. An alternative is to use niche job boards. Here are three remote specific niche job boards for you to jumpstart your search. We have Remote OK, We Work Remotely, and Remotive.io. The great thing about these niche job boards is each niche has specific attributes that might be highlighted. For instance, in remote jobs, there's a lot of remote job specific attributes when you're looking for a job because not all remote jobs are created equally. For instance, some might be EU, US, country specific due to work permits, or some might need to overlap in certain time zones. In fact, job boards like Remote OK are proud supporters of open salaries. This way, you're able to gauge the trends in remote work salaries. Right off the bat, you'll be able to quickly filter for jobs that fit your criteria without going through all the job descriptions or only finding out after you start interviewing. Or if you don't wanna jump across multiple job sites, you should check out Art's job board. Our team crawls through their web to aggregate remote job opportunities into one location so that you don't have to. It's like the one-stop shop for remote jobs. Yeah. Keep in mind, if you haven't worked remotely before, you'll probably want to think back onto side projects or group projects where you've demonstrated the ability to work remotely, at least the base skills. These include working independently, being more self-motivated, or being a better problem solver on your own. You'll want to take these examples to demonstrate to your future employer that you have what it takes to succeed in a remote environment. While applying for a new remote position might be the most straightforward, it might not be suitable for everyone because you might be going up for that promotion or you might have spearheaded a new project that it just doesn't make sense to leave in the middle of it. If so, method number two is just for you. Start off by requesting to work from home once a week. If your company has designated no meeting days, it might be best to align your remote days with the no meeting days. As you are starting out, you'll wanna keep an experimental mindset because you need to test out to see what works between you and your company. Through frequent communication about what's working and what isn't, you and your team will be able to close the gap. If your team doesn't already have a check-in system in place or a reporting system like daily standups, whether synchronous or asynchronous, this would be a great time to suggest one. Not only would this demonstrate you taking initiative in your accountability, but it also increases transparency between you and your manager for them to know what you're working on. If anything, I'd say it's a win-win situation. Unlike being on-site, where developers can simply pull up a chair next to another developer to discuss an issue, you're going to have to become more independent at figuring out solutions on your own. However, this does not mean you should not proactively reach out for help. In fact, you have to become a better judgment at making the calls in terms of how long you should spend on a certain task in terms of figuring out the issue versus versus when, at what point, you should ask for help. Most important of all, ensure that you're productive on your remote days and keep track of your targets. It can be things like having worked on more complex features or closing off more tickets than the previous period. The idea here is to get your foot in the door by starting off remote once a week and then using the positive outcomes of you being remote to go for the bigger ask, asking for more remote days. Method number three, pick up some freelance projects. The first thing you're gonna need for this is a personal portfolio website. This would be the face of your brand. Think about it this way. When you're shopping at a department store, you're walking across all these stores, you're window browsing. What you see determines whether you want to walk into the store or shop. 
right? So similarly enough, your portfolio website is the storefront for clients to determine if they wanna hire you or not. It's helpful to use platforms like Fiverr, Upwork, to list your services online to help increase your exposure. Alternatively, there's platforms to bid for freelance cases. These include freelance.com, ARC, CodeMentor. How these bidding platforms work are clients would post a description of the project that they need completed, and then freelancers would come up and bid for these projects, also known as applying for the projects, by specifying you know, your experience, how you can contribute, and what you bring to it as a means for the client to select you. Whether you decide to choose platforms where you can list your service or bid for projects, these projects generally are on a solo basis, meaning it's a one-off project. However, depending on your performance, communication, and results on this project, you may potentially be rehired for future projects. This is where communication between you and your client is especially important as it plays a large part in your chances of getting rehired. For instance, whether it's communicating expectations or deadlines. By maintaining a good relationship with your client, it increases your chances of getting rehired on future projects. If you do not have a portfolio to show for yet, it might be a little bit hard to land your first case given the competition and supply of talent. For web developers, here's a great idea. Start off by scouting for your first case locally. Look around locally for small businesses around your area that might not have a website or theirs is very outdated and then shortlist this and then outreach with a proposal to revamp their website or launch them a new one. Another alternative is to contribute to open source projects. This is not only a great way to gain recognition within the community, but also demonstrates the essential skills for remote work, like being able to solve problems on your own, self-motivation and discipline, and written communication. To sum it all up, here are the three methods to transition you from an on-site developer to a remote one. Method number one, apply for your remote jobs on remote first job boards. Compared to general job boards, these sites are more able to highlight the remote specific attributes to help you quickly and efficiently look for your remote job. Method number two, discuss with the management if you can start off working remotely once a week and slowly ramp up. Start small, create evidence to prove your success, and then ask for more. Method number three, start off with freelance projects to build up your remote experience. Use your personal website to sell yourself. If you don't have one, consider starting with freelance platforms or small businesses to build up your portfolio. That's all for today. Let me know in the comments below if you have any additional tips for transitioning from on-site to remote as a developer. Thank you so much for watching today's video and don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that bell for getting notified of future content. Catch you next time.